they stalking. This is like fucking World War One shit with Vera come from. He's like, you guys are quietly stalking through the place, and then he just holds up a fist indicating to stop. And then he does like a. It's a finger gun in terms of the motion, but he points with two fingers like at a tree off to the left, forward ahead of you. Just. <laughs> You guys turn to look at what whatever it is he's indicating, and you guys see some sort of paper attached to a tree. There's something written on it, or drawn on it, or something. Can we make it out from Just, this distance, or not from this distance? It's about sixty feet out of here. God, this is some Slenderman shit. We have to collect all the notes. <laughs> Wait, nah. Anyways, uh. Slender Man doesn't make quasi darkness. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what kinda of threw it off. Like, wait a second, it's like no, he just murders you. Unless he does that in the movie, but I wouldn't know. Oh fuck, I thought there was even a movie. Yeah. Jesus, that was a bad yeah. Anyway. Sandra's been gutted yeah. already today. She's fine with not going under the tree. I mean you're always under trees here, so Under that tree specifically. Verk goes next to a tree, just her leans on it, ducks behind it. Because it's clear that touching the tree itself doesn't do anything. There how Abigail fell on one. And he just gestures you guys to come in closer. And then he well, whispers like, to you. Like they keep it in 30 feet of hmm. He like sort of stage whispers so that all of you can hear. What do we want to do? I mean yes you have Mage Hand try and grab the paper. Or maybe okay. not. I'll just use my my cantrip. I'm not gonna cast my good one. Wait, well, there's mage hand. hand. Yeah, I'm gonna use my it, mage hand. You guys stalk closer to it because you guys are sixty feet out. You go to like twenty five. Get closer to it. So you I'm move just, up I'm on the lookout for something to pop up. Okay, here yeah. goes. <laughs> you mage hand the paper closer. I can make the noise. Wait, hold on. Let me bring it closer to you. Uh, as you guys get it in your guys' groups, you know, custody, I guess, I don't know, your, your visual capability, you guys look at it. Uh, it appears to be like a painting. Uh, it's a painting of only black ink. It's like white or like near white paper and black ink. Black paint, rather. Not ink. Black paint painting on it. It does not look particularly uh, deft. It's more akin to like a child's drawing, honestly. What does it depict? Well, I should say who looks at it. I'll tell you. I suppose I'll have a look. So I'm just gonna wait for the people that have a look to tell her what it is, because she doesn't trust it worth the fucking <laughs> shit. So, is it only wise looking? Uh, yeah, so I think so. Yeah. yeah. Ah, how wise are the rest of you? Wise make me a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> It's nah, destined to be! <laughs> it was your calling. Oh, wait, I've got a disadvantage. Is it a disadvantage or is it normal? No, it's normal. So 25. Oh, okay. yeah. Am I good? Am I dead? <laughs> your brain just oh, explodes. Let me describe it. You look at the painting and your mind is hears the echoes of a child's laughter. You see the image of a, a child painting this. You don't see the child themselves, just their hand, their brush, the little uh, palette that they're dipping their paintbrush onto. But it's different. You hear the laughing and then it like, flashes to this painting image and you hear the child crying.
you know in your heart of hearts, you don't know, but you know in your heart of hearts that this child was attempting to paint a noble's manor, albeit they're only a child. So it's not the best. Okay. Other than that, it is but a painting. All right, cool. Bit creepy, but okay. Huh. I guess I'll relay that information to everyone. Creepy possessed painting. What do you make of it? Ditch it. Varric says. Yeah. Do you think that's really safe? I don't think anything's safe, in all honesty. Maybe we should put it back where we found it. In case it, like, I don't know, pisses off the kid or something. What if we have to hold on to it in case we need to make a way out? Nah, that sounds weird. Where the fucking Feywild is. I mean... Make a choice and make it fast. I don't want to stick around this tree. All right, like just um, just what just take it, keep it. Why Type keep it? one into chat if you want to keep it. Roll twenty chat. Type two if you don't. Well, God. <laughs> the nose have it. I'm pretty sure well, both Barry and Abigail are like, nope. Mark my words. Abigail says yes, Varric says no. If you want to Notice the two fairy touched people are the ones the telling thing. you to keep <laughs> This is true. Then keep the thing. It's up to you guys as a group. I just do the vote thing to make it clear where your vote lies. My vote stays as one because. I think that it might be good. I think that if if we found it, it was meant for us to find. A and B, it might be useful to have down the track if we have to show to someone. Or use it as a, a way to solve a puzzle or something. I think if it was left there, we were supposed to find it. Then keep the thing. I don't care. We just need to go. <laughs> just Agreed. keep it on you, I suppose, if that's the case. Fine. I'll take it and tuck it into my voluminous robe sleeve. Of course, as wizards have. You guys continue after having interacted with the thing. You guys continue. Guy got another D100. Yeah. Nintendo 64. You guys are you continue your efforts, passing through this forest, this dimly lit forest, seeing no trails, signs, buildings, anything except forest, going in a singular direction and finding nothing. It took you guys 30 minutes to find the first one, the first uh, event. We'll say. It's an hour later when you find the next one. You guys have been stalking through these woods for an hour and a half to no avail. Fast without trace has faded. If that's the case, then why don't you all make me new stealth rolls? No plus 10 this time. Is that a disadvantage? No, it's not a disadvantage, just no no additional mod. Hey, Abigail coming in strong. Damn, what the hell? Yeah. Stop mimicking me, Rebecca. <laughs> oh. That's funny, because your mod's a four, but her mod's a nine. 
but like your numbers are four and nine to make thirteen. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a very weird coincidence, sir. Uh, you just have a nerd. <laughs> you guys are definitively definitively less quiet, but the biggest catch now is that you do leave tracks in the grass as you guys walk past, on top of it and past it. This you know dull gray grass. Varric once more holds up a fist and then points with two fingers. Double flick. Off. Nearly direct right, but it's technically still a bit ahead. About 120 feet ahead. Or not ahead, but in that direction. You guys can hardly make it out initially, but you guys squint and you guys see a body hanging from a tree. See if it's a feckin' kid, I'm actually gonna scream. You guys go closer. I say we stay away from that. Yeah, fuck that. That's the only trouble. <sighs> That's the only different thing we've seen in an hour. Sandra rolls her eyes and heads towards the thing to go look at it. Staying like a at least like 30, 40 feet away from it. Varric stacks up on a tree in a similar distance, a bit closer. It is not a child's corpse. Go, yo. That makes you feel better. It does actually quite a great deal. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a man. Uh, you think? Uh, it's immensely decayed and desiccated. Mm. You can tell by their attire, it's stained, dusty, still. Uh, whoever this was, they were some sort of wanderer. And they are hung. I don't think that's a surprising to hear. Does it? What's the what's the noose made out of? Rope, hemp and rope. So probably, possibly did it to himself. Possibly someone did it to him. Is this uh, a warning, or did think, they just not get out? I think it's more a story of somebody came in, couldn't find their way out, and got tired of wandering. Uh, is anyone go closer to it? No. Alright. And may all of you make me perception checks, but I disagree. Disadvantage, yeah? Disadvantage. Oh, that's not Did bad. You? They're kind of okay checks. Are they okay enough? Who knows? <laughs> uh... Aminius, you don't notice or see anything. To 14 and above, you guys see buried, or not buried, but underneath where he is, not directly, but like on the same tree, like where the roots are, something was buried there. Something was hurriedly dug up. You can see the missing chunks of grass and stuff like that, and then patted down. With a 17, though, Sandra. You're looking around wary of your surroundings and you see just barely, just barely, some of the lights about a few hundred feet behind you guys go dark. Uh, it doesn't move though. It doesn't come closer. It doesn't move. It sort of sits there. She just managed to catch it in its like transition of overtaking some lights. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like you know those gifts of cats that are like approaching a camera, and then the camera ducks around the corner, and then goes back around the corner, and, the and then it moves. Closer. Yeah, yeah, it's like that, except it doesn't actually move when you look way around. There. If she looks away from it, counts to three, and then looks back, 
can she make out the differentiation of it moved forward? It doesn't move at all. It doesn't move at all. It just sort of there. This cloud. I think whatever was following us might have caught up a bit. We should get the hell out of here. It means we're being watched. Whatever it is, it's curious about what we're doing and not outright trying to kill us. Or it's waiting for a chance to kill us when we're not paying attention. <sighs> Nevertheless, there's something under the person over there, so if somebody wants to go dig that up, go right ahead. Abigail looks at Farrakh. He looks at her and just shakes his head very glacially. Oh, come on. You said yourself, it's the only thing we've seen in an hour. I mean, I want to dig it up. Then give me your shovel, I'll dig it up. What? I'm gonna dig it up. <sighs> Fine, I'm gonna dig it up. I love you. <laughs> he says, she says he's walking closer to it slowly. Pull out his E tool, his entrenching tool, which is AKA a shovel. The ultimate shovel, <laughs> Varric shovel. I'm, I'm going to stand near Abigail and have my 30 feet from, from uh, Varric and have my Aegis on him as he's doing this. Varric goes round the tree, eyeing the corpse hanging from it, sort of limp there. Bastard. So I'm just, just kind of watching the darkness to see if it moves closer Still, or more things appear. Doesn't move at all. Glorious. Fantastic. Can I have a quick look around as well and see if there's anything else kicking around out there? Nothing else. Nothing else? Okay. You're a roll perception. Nothing else. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm keeping my focus on Beric here. If anything happens, though, I want to be ready. Roger, roger. <sighs> Beric is quite fast. It takes him less than a minute to uncover just less than a foot down a uh, little it's like a uh, like a jewelry box made of this sort of brassy material with like uh, similarly colored like sort of copper-esque trimming holding like the corners and stuff like that he just holds it up for you as to like to show that he has something There is a lock on it. That just not it's not attached to the little straw box itself. It's just like a, a external externally added little tiny lock. Like a padlock. Not even a padlock. It's like smaller than that. Very very slowly keeping his eye on the corpse, gun in one hand, box in the other, moves away from the tree and back to closer to you guys the corpse does it seem uh, it said it was decaying so I guess it's hard to tell does it does it seem human humanoid uh, elven uh, dwarven let me hear No disadvantage. Just medicine. Just medicine? Straight medicine? Yeah, just straight medicine. Same. Uh, appears to be human. It doesn't have the more narrow face of an elf. That, uh, whether it's you know, provincial human or nevros, that's determinant. But is it seems it, it was human. Is it wearing a coat? It's wearing a cloak. Cloak. Oh, okay. How how high above me is it? Uh, how high in the tree it is? It's no no the uh, the corpse the distance from the corpse and myself. Oh, uh, a square plus b square is c square. Hmm. Probably like thirty feet. Assuming you're okay. like twenty feet away. 
then I will uh, uh, use Mage Hand to rummage through its pockets. Alright, you Mage Hand and pull aside its cloak, reach into the cloak pockets, the actual pockets on the person. Um, it seems bereft of anything. No coin, no, no key. identification, no key, okay. nothing. Alright. I could probably smash this thing open, honestly. And he taps the dock of his rifle. Do you want to find out what happens when you smash a lock in a fairy place? I don't think this this box is from here. I could open the thing without smashing it, potentially. Yep. I, I, as Sandra says that, Ward transfers the Aegis from uh, Varric to Sandra. And Varric transfers the jewelry box from himself to her. You might guess. So you tell you tell whatever about the the darkness, right? Yeah. She, I'll she keep an eye. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the thing. Yeah, she points <laughs> off in the direction that she saw the thing, which is hard to pin down. I would imagine because it's literally just darkness. <laughs> Uh-huh. Just like I saw it there, it's like I'll trust you, chief. Uh, so the thing is, like, it's that is it's weird to describe it because like this is dim light, but it's like it's like dim light as you go deeper into the water, right? Even mm-hmm. even dim light goes to darkness. So as you guys look further and further out, it does seem like this little light pocket that you guys travel through just goes to darkness eventually. Hmm. So thieves tools then. Mm-hmm. Do this. Do that. 17? It is not in any way a strong lock. Yeah. You unlock it with these. Yay. And she immediately hands it to Wise for her to open and see if there's some weird magic. <laughs> it might have weird magic shit. I don't. I don't want it to. What if it explodes on me or something? You have it. Well, you're right, get you it. have resistance to fire. Oh, shut up. I open Amaze, the thing, would you like someone the, else can the look at the thing to see if it's murderous. Box. Yes, just Move hand it over. Just I give it to him. From okay. Sandra to Arminius. Alright. Ah. Sandra, Sandra pivots around a tree <laughs> to make sure there's a tree between her and Arminius. I do the same. I stand by uh, Arminius. Alright. I'm freaked out, but I'm gonna pretend like I'm not. <laughs> Roll of deception. <laughs> mm. I'll put a hand on the mini shoulder and say, you got this. Thanks. Nevertheless, you can see my hand a shake. We believe in you. Thumbs up. You can do it. Can I use the mage hand to open it? If you want. Okay. So I'll step back from it um, a few feet, maybe like 10. 15 feet. Hide behind a tree. Alright. Yeah, and I'll um, I'll use the mage hand to gently lift the... It's like, it's like a bunch of uh, ordnance people trying to detonate IED in Iraq right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> use the drone. Use the drone. The bot. Thank you. Yes. That's Unseen Servant. <laughs> You open it up. <laughs> nothing blows up. Nothing shoots out lightning. A quad of darkness. It's a normal chest. Reach inside. See what's in there. That was really anticlimactic. I mean, you see sorry. inside, folded and tucked into it, are several pieces of paper. Parchment, not paper. I wonder if these are going to turn into small knives that are going to attack us all. Honestly, at this point, I doubt anything's really going to happen, but... Don't give the forest <laughs> ideas. <laughs> that is an odd sentence. Oh my God. <laughs> Hurry up and do this. I'm getting tired of looking at the thing. Alright, can I try to figure out what it is? It's written in common, so it's not that hard. Okay. So, can I read it? You un- unfold it, the little stack of it, and you begin uh, pa- uh, paging through them. Been reading them. 
Uh, they are vastly different entries in terms of time. Uh, you can tell by just the wear and tear of it. So, like, the first one is the more... Or is the most... The oldest one. And just has more wear and tear on the edges as opposed to the bottom one, which is, like, near uh, pretty pristine. You read through it, and you're reading through the journal of what you assume is the hanging man right there. He... This journey starts with him going to meet his in-laws. Like, he has been away from home, and he's gonna go back home his wife and is staying with his in-laws. Then he... The, it again, jumps pretty drastically every time. It escalates pretty quickly. The next entry is him, you know, it's like, oh, I found, you know, passage, transit, you know, going with some folk. Next entry is, you know, now they, about like a week or two later, he talks that those people disappeared in the middle of the night. And he doesn't even bother bringing in like the wagon and horses that they had because he thinks it's cursed. Continues. It doesn't seem he ever made it to the town that they were meant to go to because he describes essentially what's around you guys now an endless forest. He so said he kind of just tripped and fell into the Feywild. Uh, maybe. He says he found in this journal entry, he found one of the guys he traveled with, and he learned immediately and quickly what the old, the dead man's beard does. He says, you know, it was a moment of hope immediately crushed as the guy was killed in front of him about 20 feet or so ahead of him. The next entry, you don't know how much time has passed. Oh, there's no way of telling time where you currently are, really. From the way he's, well, he describes it, he says it feels like he's been here for a day now. He says that he's traveled for that whole day. Straight line. There's no end. Nothing. He's, well, to say he's depressed is such an understatement. He's filled of dread that he was never going to get out of here. As you read that, you look at this hanging corpse over there and realize that's exactly what happened. Well. There's, there's still other entries. There's still a couple more pages. You read into it. And he details that he found trees, peculiar trees with items inside that he didn't dare pull out or touch. He describes in another entry that he found what he thinks is the edge of the place. A sea of ultra dark, ultra black wheat or something, brush, that goes as high as his neck, maybe a bit more. And he says he, did, he doesn't ever say how he knows, but he says he said if he went in there, he wouldn't come back out. Hmm. So he goes back to the light. You want an idea what Ultra Dark is like? Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Three pictures up in the Wayfarer's chat. He's holding Ultra Dark substance. It absorbs light. Oh, well, it's Vanta Black. <laughs> yeah. So he describes the trees, and then he describes in his final entry that he. He's, he's figuring it out. That whatever thing haunts him, he sees it when he tries to get any form of rest. It's just sort of there. This darkness out there that stalks him. He gets it. This is its hunting ground? Playground? He doesn't know that necessarily, but whatever it is, it just likes what him slowly fade away. Wow. And then he says that I'm not going to let it end me. I'm going to take it into my own hands. And then your eyes once more just sort of coldly roll, gaze over to where he's hanging in the tree. Wow. 
As Minius is reading this, uh, so how would how would leaving a shard behind work? Do I just take out my? You just <laughs> try to chip off a piece of it wherever you okay. want it. I will mage hand it into the same coat pocket that I rummaged through earlier and leave it there. So you <laughs> break off a piece of it and then <laughs> close up the cloak. Give a little pat. I assume you read this to yourself because I think reading it out loud is not my best. But I imagine after you read it, though, you tell the group. Or do you wait to tell them until you guys are safer? Um, you're talking to me. Yes. Yeah, I would just tell the group. Okay. So you read it through. It's not a lot of stuff to read, especially for women. Uh, you read it through and then tell the group its contents. Well, at least we know there's an edge to this place, and at least we know that that fucking thing over there, and very points at the dark cloud over there, this dark mass. Sentient. Downside, we don't know if we can reason with it to get out, whether it would even care, and what is outside the edge. I bet that if that if he had gone into that ground, he probably would have made it out. But Or been consumed by darkness. True, but remember Oftentimes we're gonna feel like we want to stay. I don't want to fucking say I want to get out of here. That being said, it's not such an easy task. <laughs> he says it's like getting increasingly and increasingly louder, and he's, it almost feels like he's trying to like bad mouth the, the dark mass that he's staring at, like way over there. Maybe let's not bad mouth the big skinny dark thing right now. I don't think it matters. Or well, tried to did shoot. apologize to it and it yeah. cleaved him. So maybe just don't talk to it at all? Just like a <sighs> mad child. It just needs to be appeased. Yeah, that's not a kid I want to deal with. Let's go. Agreed. Let's go. If, if I take a, a deep breath and sort of try to Get a get a get an emotional sense of, of the area I'm in. Do I I would imagine I would be picking up dread and despair. Oh yeah. Do I get the sense that this place is feeding off of dread and, and despair? Hmm. Roll me your background information. I would use an inspiration on that. <laughs> yeah, that's there. No, don't count the one. And before it's two. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I won to it. You don't think it. You don't get the sense that the environment is. Uh, I want to say... Hmm. It's aware of your guys' existence, but it doesn't seem to know it. You don't think it's feeding off of death and despair or anything? Well, yeah, like nothing like that. It's just an aftermath side of things. That's for the environment. You have no clue about the thing. Yeah. Follows you. Let's go. Yeah. And let's go away from the evil mess over there. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have a, a lantern or a torch? Yeah. Closest I've got is a light spell. Same. Uh, do you mind if I borrow? Uh, 
Uh, Abby, I'll hand you one torch. I will uh, light it up. I'll use the uh, a cantrip firebolt because I don't have anything else to <laughs> start a fire. It's not like Tana where you're just producing fire. Left. <laughs> no. <laughs> So you light up the torch and the, uh, I was doing some drill work or something. What the fuck? Anyways, you light up the torch and it begins to glow and then a strong breeze just <laughs> snuffs it. But before that happens, it happens so quickly. The dead man's beard above all of you guys turns immediately from purple to red, like like that. I need all of you to make me dexterity saving throws. I had a feeling about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a plus three to this, uh, word? Well, I mean that it doesn't. Yeah. Well, don't worry, 14 doesn't make it, guys. So 18. Abigail. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, 18. Oh, Abigail makes it. Oh, she did Barrick makes it. it. Team NPC. Did and Zondra. Nice. Oh, hey. The rest of you that failed, so sub 20 people, make me constitution saving throws. Oh. oh my god. Oh my yeah. god. That's right. Ooh, hey, it's the exact same thing. Hey, it's the same thing, except it's not, not a one. Uh, Ward succeeds a con save. Nice, nice. So you can have this. Yeah, or, well, I'll talk to you. So. At 10 to, okay, so to Wise and Aminus, you guys take 33 points of damage. Uh, uh, Aminus uh, would be reduced by 4 physical. Okay, just... so, so that would be 33. To 29 points of damage from Minius. You ward uh, 10, 10 piercing and then half of this amount. So that would be 12. Yeah, 24 divided by 2. Yeah, so 12 plus 10, so 22. Alrighty. As the, the dead man's beard above you guys tries to make you the first two words of its name, and then stabs down at all of you as the light gets snuffed promptly. Barrel Some of you dodge it. <laughs> Some of you dodge it barely. You guys are hurt considerably. Uh, Wise, you got hurt the most, correct? Yep, yeah, I'm suffering. So this is for you. Heal 12. This is... Okay. For Minius, heal 14, and then this is for... Nine. Alright, don't do that one. What was for what? Uh, you heal for nine. Uh, Wise heals for 12, Minius heals for 14, and then Ward, you heal... Nine. Nine. So, not a fan of fire. Or light. You guys... Drez's eyes dart around frantically. At well, this chaos, Varric immediately comes over and patches you guys up, and then he realizes something, and it seems Abigail realizes it simultaneously. Consider it a married couple connection, and they both their eyes, well, not their eyes, they, but they both turn to face the direction that the dark mass was at, and now you all can see it very clearly because it's a little closer now. Before it was a few hundred feet, maybe a bit more, four fifty. Now it's at like 100. Alright, so the more we disturb the forest, the faster it moves. Oh, no, I'm it's still going walking to... at you. Oh, fuck. I'm going to whisper to Aminius as, 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 as I slowly turn to leave. Uh, you don't have a, and to have a, a daylight spell, do you? Daylight? Yeah. Do wizards have daylight? No, I don't I think have that. Druid or Maybe cleric. that's a druid. Yeah. I know clerics have it. I know that. I don't know. Let's find out. What happens but if yeah, I mean, you it's just... light up something that can't be snuffed out? 
Maybe it just fucking keeps stabbing us or something? I don't want to know. Let's go. Yeah. You guys can see it slowly, what step by step coming closer. Oh, good god, no. Let's go for the, I don't know, ultra dark field or some shit. I'd rather face that. You guys injured in the assorted states. Um. That was kind of. Um, a minute, how many points of health are you missing? Um, I am 65 out of 80. He'll heal back to full 15. Okay. Uh, why is how, how low? How, what are you missing? Um, 64 of 85. With lost health, you are at my maximum health. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am also. And, ha- and how hurt are you, Ward? 85 out of 101. But that's right, you have fuck super high up. Uh, Sandra's at 46 of 64, if that means anything. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Sandra and Wise, heal yourselves for 14. How much? 14? For what, sorry? Four, 14. 14. So be Abigail six, no, has no more healing left. She's out. Uh, okay, so if we're moving forward... Uh, I think you guys are just moving the opposite direction from that thing. Yeah, it, as we're moving, Ward would like to attempt to take point, and as he's moving, he's going to fix in his in his mind a, a mental image of uh, a good berry bush in a very sort of bright, lush environment, and just focus on oh, that great. as his sort of navigational motivation. Fair enough. Going on a hunch here. <laughs> so, uh, that's the case, then let's re- reorient the um, the order here, the march order. So you want to take point, right? So point is front. Or point is, <laughs> point is top, there you go. Varric's going to be on the back, he'll swap over to keep it thing. Abigail will stay close to her hubby. Fucking nerd. Is this the order? I mean, you want to move anywhere? Mm. What do you guys? Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> get a room. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> it was, was bound timing. to happen sooner or later. <laughs> oh, god damn it. You guys take a new formation. Yes, this is good. I'm a thorn between two roses. There, I'll do it like that. that now, awful. now it's like a shape. Awful. Now it's like uh, symmetrical. <laughs> nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. So, you guys, do you guys hurriedly go off, or do you try to stealth off? It's like, uh, it is. Here's the thing. Again, it moves super slow. Well, it walks super slow. I won't say moves super slow. It walks super slow. So, like, you guys get outpaced if you guys bother moving quickly. Uh, the question is, do you want to, or do you want to bother stealthing? Um, I think it would be a good idea to stealth. It's still like a hundred feet behind you, so. Yeah, but if we can okay. make that distance further by not being detected by it, cool with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's able to find us even when we were stealthing, so. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Okay, then can you all you make me some stealth rolls? No disadvantage. Alright, nice. Hey! I'm motivated. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, you know, that's pretty fair. Wanna we'll find that freaking good berry bush. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. At nineteen though. Varric <laughs> Stupid Varric. You guys Sammy stealthily with some of these rolls. It's like scout running. You know, you're like you're darting from like cover to cover, crouched over a good chunk of the time, stuff like that. You guys are just trying to move quickly but quietly and not leave too much of a track behind you. You guys move away, direct opposite of the 
evil mass. Going further and further until you eventually do or it leaves your line of sight one. And you guys are back alone amidst the silence of this dull rest. That's where we're in today's session. Well, I'm excited for more. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this fun madness. Yeah, very suspenseful. Mm. It is definitely exciting. Definitely, yeah. And now you have all been hit by the dead man's people. Oh, lovely. Share the love. Oh, yeah. Hooray. Share the love. I, was after. I think I know what we're followed by. <laughs> yeah. No. And I think I know the name of this place. Ooh. How the hmm. fuck do you know Dead that? man walking on the green mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> ah, that's good. Yeah, uh, let me turn off this nice, lovely music. There we go. I'm not gonna lie. You know that. Uh, what? Goes on, like you know the breath and the and the sound that goes sort of goes like between your headphones. Yes. Mm. That really, really freaked the, me the fuck out the first time I heard that. <laughs> Good. I, th I thought it was me first because I have heavy breathing right now because of mm. my nose. <laughs> I did not realize it was the music. Nope. Yeah, yeah, like it, it didn't click immediately that it was the music. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> ah. It's uh, directly behind me. That song is. Ooh, I'm so happy I found it. Yeah, it fits really well, actually. Sim Magnifique. It's, it's a weird thing, place I found. Honestly, it's, uh, it's from. Criminal Minds at uh, Psycho Profiling Netflix show. I like that show. It's great. Yeah, go eat. Okay, go I'll... eat. You're good. Later, y'all. Yeah, All I'll right. be. I'll be good for scheduling. So just um, I guess just post um the time. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. Fine. All right. Go cool, enjoy cool. your. Bye. 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 But yeah, uh, the music is from the Fox episode. Uh, it's from the guy that broke into people's houses, families' houses, and then sort of just killed them off after playing house with them for like a week or two or something. I think I remember that episode. Yeah, it's like the red-haired guy. And then the end of the episode is him. He's just like, this is what happens when the head of house is weak. Children perish, wives wither. But me, I'm, I'm an excellent father. And he's a fucking serial killer that kills children. And that's what plays at the end. As they find his little box of wedding rings, and they found out like, oh, we were investigating three families. And he has like a dozen, a dozen wedding rings of dead fathers. So that means he's killed a dozen families, or something like that. Really ominous. But the music <laughs> is. Magnifique for exactly what we're doing today. Ah, good times, good times. And y'all got your little secrets too, and the oh, void. Yeah. Uh, I already got, I already got a fucking session too. Yeah, I thought of it right now. I Ooh. should be good for next Saturday as well. Awesome. I'm double checking right now to confirm. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be a massive dick again and like, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> you fucking. No, it's good. Uh, next Saturday will be 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Correct yes, yes, that's seconds, yeah. Yes, I am free and free. Free and free, nice. No Two work and available for a play. Heck yeah. Double freedom. Alright, so we'll just have, um... Is it by, like, an hour, or you want an hour and a half? Let's see. Me? Um, an hour is fine. Yeah, I don't, like... Yeah, I'll be okay. Okay. I mean, we'll just shoot the shits for it. Was... 
Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So that's usually when I arrive, you're still, like, shooting the shit, so I'll be good. Okay. Yeah. Alright, then 12 o'clock. Yeah, I've been trying to get, like, I've been trying to get, like, the Saturdays off, but I just, yeah, they're just like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Let's see for next week's session. So, like, the days start, but minus 30 minutes. Boom. <laughs> and then, boom. Today's session title, Dark Tidings, because that's literally on. Oh yeah, I feel like that describes it quite well. <laughs>